This conference will now be recorded. Welcome everyone. This is the June 24th meeting of the Climate Smart Kingston Commission. Uh, I just called the meeting to order at 5.04. Uh, my name is Julie Noble and I am the chair uh, of this commission. And present, we have uh, the following commissioners, uh, Melissa Ayacheta, Jessica Kuonen, Kevin McAvoy, Maya Nemisto, Serena Pepper, Cal Truman, and John Wackman. Uh, did I miss anyone? We also have one guest. So Eliza Edge, thank you for joining us. And Eliza is a potential, um, is an applicant for a position on the commission. So we welcome her and uh, certainly invite you to engage in any of the conversation as we go along. We don't have any guests that I can see besides Eliza. Eliza, would you like to make any uh, public comment for the record? We have a public comment period at the beginning of every meeting. Would you like to make any formal public comment? Nope, just. There we go. Hey, Eliza, how did you find us? Um, good question. A couple of routes. Um, Karen uh, had, had said that there was an open spot on the advisory board, but I I'm born and raised from Woodstock, and I've also sat in on some of their climate force task meetings as well. Um, so was looking at Kingston um, to try to get involved because I currently live here. Great. Well, welcome. Um, so Betta, Dan Smith, and Karen Sullivan are not able to make it, so they are excused. Um, seeing no other public, uh, is there are there any modifications to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, uh, we need to review and approve the May 2020 meeting minutes. Does anyone have any changes, concerns, or issues with the May 2020 meeting minutes? Looks fine to me. Kevin, nice job. Okay, so hearing none, can I have a motion to approve the May 2020 minutes? I was not at that meeting, so I shouldn't motion to approve. <laughs> I wasn't either. <laughs> I make yeah, I make a motion to accept the minutes. This is Cal. Cal, okay. Can I get a second? I can second it. This is Maya. Maya, can is there any discussion? All in favor of accepting the minutes, say aye or give me a thumbs up. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstaining? Aye. Was that Kevin? Kevin, did you say aye? I'm abstaining. Aren't you? I said, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So no abstentions. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, wait, 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 did, John, did you abstain? Uh, I was just saying that I shouldn't be the one to. Um, oh, make a motion. Okay. So everybody motion. approved of it? Okay. Yeah. Anybody? That, yeah. I was just checking to see if anybody that was not here last time you know, was abstaining. Okay, no problem then. They're all approved, then we're good. Okay, um, thank you. So moving on to old business, 2020 climate action plan and greenhouse gas emissions update. Um, we had a meeting with Cadmus and the, and Citizens for Local Power to go over the revised scope. Um, and it looks like things are coming together for, um, moving forward with the climate action plan. So we haven't started um, an actual schedule of dates to, to be pulling this together or very specific actions at this point. Um, we are still awaiting the formal decision by the NOVA Foundation as to whether or not they will approve the funding. Um, we anticipate that they will, but as a technicality, we are in a formality. We are we are holding um, until that action happens. So until we hear from them, which we anticipate will be in July, we are in a holding pattern on um, advancing the climate action plan. Um, something that ties together with greenhouse gas, em gas emissions uptake and refrigerants, and Stan isn't here, I will just update you all that I was on a call today with folks from the Pollution Prevention Institute and they have decided to move forward with the refrigerants workshop and we are one of the two communities the other is phillipstown no kidding 
No kidding, like you know where Phillipstown is? Yeah, right next to Cold Spring. Okay, I thought it was, that's Westchester County, right? Yeah, oh no, Putnam. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Um, oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Great. Um, so we and Kingston and Phillipstown will be the uh, part of this pilot, and the way that it's going to work is that um, it is going to start in August, and it's going to be monthly uh, for six months for about an hour each month, and it's going to be uh, the main objectives are to to the first couple will be um, instructional and informative for the communities. And then from there, we're going to complete an inventory of our refrigerants. Um, uh, I wrote this down, should have looked before I started talking. Okay, uh, do an inventory of our refrigerants. Um, create the greenhouse gas emit or understand the greenhouse gas emissions from the refrigerants. So calculate that data, which we have not done before. So this will be the first information in a baseline. Um, and then the third part will be to create a management plan. Um, and then to, by understanding what we have to set goals and then to create a set of actions to get to those goals, which is all fantastic and free um, and very exciting. So uh, we are part of this pilot. Um, I will say that uh, this is really exciting because it aligns directly with what we've been doing and now there's like technical assistance and a timeline and it's moving forward. So once I have more information, um, I'll loop you guys back in about what role Climate Smart will play in this. Um, I actually anticipated that Sean would actually be the person who participates in the workshop um, and then like additional homework and other data collection, all that other stuff could maybe be done by Climate Smart. Um, and mm -hmm. but we can have that conversation offline, certainly. Uh, this is, you know, it's exciting, I think, and especially to have someone help us along the way and to get something done that we wanted to get done. So mm -hmm. that was promising. Um, and I think we're going to have another meeting, another call in a couple of weeks just to catch up on um, exactly what the logistics will look like. So, um, yeah, John. So, uh, so they're providing technical assistance, uh, and and that does sound exciting and great because, as we all know, greenhouse gases are a huge, or refrigerants are a huge contributor to GHCs. Um, are they? What is their expectation or our expectation for attendance? And and are they in a position to uh, help provide materials for? Uh, you know, a, a campaign to get people's attention so that they actually show up. Okay, so that's that's a good point. Um, I did bring that up as a, an, another objective that would be important to us, which is um, communicating to the public in a digestible way. Um, it is not been it has not been determined yet whether the scope of this workshop is going to just cover government scope uh -huh. or community and. Uh -huh. Frankly, I feel like they're leaning towards just government. And However, I did say, I did one second, I just I did say to them, even if we it only covers government and we're only not only, like it's important still, but if we're just covering inventorying and goals and management plan for the city, it's really a good it's an important objective for us though to communicate this and manage expectations with the community and at the very least to say you know we're walking the walk now and these are the things you should be doing to walk the walk as well mm -hmm. um you know i told them that the ideal would be for us to you know implement initiatives on a community level and do the inventory on the community level and all of this on a community level um but you know this is all this is all free technical assistance to us and i know they have limitations in scope so um i We'll get what we get. Um, but I love what you said about walking the walk because you know how often people complain that government does not lead, and here is a here's a great example of government leading, and and so to build awareness around this issue and say look at what your city is doing, uh, and everyone you know should 
pay attention to this. Yep. And, and here are the resources and so forth and so on. Yep. When does it start? They're sli they want to start it in August. I think that they are tr currently trying to understand the platform that they want to use because it's, I guess it's going to be kind of like more than just like a Zoom meeting. It's going to be more like a, like a, a college course, like a course. Oh. Like, you know, so they're going to, there's going to be homework and there's going to be, you know, things that you need to be able to rig up on and all these other things in between. Um, so uh, I just, I need to catch up with Sean to see he doesn't necessarily know that he's been voluntold to be doing this. Um, <laughs> So we'll see how that goes, and then I'll I'll catch up with you guys to see what what role climate smart can play. In. Uh, has uh, have you had a chance to share this with Dan? No, I had the call with folks today this morning, and oh. I haven't talked to Dan yet. That's right, this morning. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I will shoot a note separately out to Dan and you guys here, um, and Sean, and just circle back with everyone to connect on this. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem like, I haven't seen any grant um, proposals coming through or uh, opportunities coming through at all from the state. CFAs don't seem to be coming through at all. So um, trying to put our, mm. well, and, and why would we apply for a grant to basically get exactly what we're about to get? So we'll see what we get out of this workshop. And then if there's something we wanna move forward from that, I also wouldn't be surprised if you know, we are now positioning ourselves to say, you know, we've got this inventory, we've done our greenhouse gas emissions, you know, we've got this, we are poised and we're ready and we have a plan and now, you know, give us additional funding to, to make the plan happen or whatever. So I think it's great, great opportunity. Uh, I don't know, Maya or Jessica or anyone else, if you had anything more on refrigerants that you wanted to add? Um, yeah, we'll just add that um, we had a really great conversation with Michael Helm uh, last week or the week before. We just reached out to him because we were um, just looking for information to kind of scope out in case we were going to apply for um, a grant. And we just got into a lot of details. He hooked us up with a lot of resources um, and it's just a wealth of knowledge. So. Um, Dan really is, he really can bring home the key points, um, but I don't know if Maya has anything to add or, that's good. Um, yeah, my, people might remember that Michael Helms was the person who presented from New Yorkers for cool refrigerants man management um, on that, well, the um, commission meeting when we had people calling in back when that was like not a thing everyone did every day. Right. He's in um, war, right, he's in war. He, he was an amazing, he gave us so much information. He, I mean, I think he helped us like focus in on a couple of things that, um, you know, it, it, like if this other, if P2I is focusing on government um, work, he gave us some really good ideas for community work for like targeting um, contractors because they're often the ones that are actually moving the refrigerants from homes to a uh, um, recovery center and they're not necessarily um, disposing of them correctly. Um, and he gave us some cool ideas for there's um you can get handheld refrigerant detectors which is like if we want to go like gorilla style out and start detecting around and seeing if there's leaks anywhere that's something that the commissioners could do um so anyway we created or just created like a shared folder um with a bunch of resources that we're kind of collecting um that might be helpful um just for general knowledge and if eventually we go for a grant but i i think what you're talking about julie that that um that webinar series sounds incredible and if there's space for some of us to sit in i know that if it's like a if it's a course maybe they have some limitations but if there's room for a few of us to join i think that there'd be at least some interest here great perfect yeah and i'll get a i'll get a um more of an impression from p2i we we didn't go into it today but whether or not they think since it's only two communities, like I don't know why it would matter if we have several representatives, um, you know, there. So I'll talk to them um, and see what their what their thoughts are, and I'll share that information. Yeah, in Phillipstown, I just made a quick check. The population of Phillipstown is nine thousand. Yeah. So we'll we be the big a big. We had a town and a city. That's yeah. Okay, great. 
Um, anything else on refrigerants at this point? I'm glad that we were able to make some headway, so that's very exciting. Um, so sustainability projects I'll go over. Uh, I had some promise, a promising call today with uh, my LED contractor, and it seems like we may be opening up the, the LED streetlight project in the short future, which is very exciting. Um, in the meantime, there has been some incentive that's come through from Central Hudson that um, it's this small business um, direct energy, direct lighting uh, retrofit, which uh, about a year or so ago, we were able to retrofit 10 or 11 of our buildings with this really great incentive from Central Hudson. And at the time, I didn't think the incentive could get any better, but I was uh, communicated with about a week or so ago from Lime Energy, who's their sub, contractor and they said that the incentive is now 100% incentive, which means free. Oh. And so uh, for projects under $10,000. And so I rapidly had them come back and audit the rest of the buildings that we hadn't done. And so um, just this week in three days, I signed contracts for the wastewater treatment plant, the Rondout Neighborhood Center, the Central Fire Station. And all of them are getting all of their lights re re retrofitted for free which is unbelievable. So uh, very, very exciting. This is available um, to, to businesses, small businesses. Yes, and I don't know if it's, I don't, it's called, hold on. It's like, uh, it's called Central Hudson Small Business Direct Install Lighting Program. And I don't know enough about the program stipulations themselves to know if I should be promoting this to the world or not, or if we qualify for a specific reason. But this is the program under which we have been working with Central Hudson for several years. Um, I suppose I could certainly look into it um, to be promoting it. I don't know why there has to be some sort of stipulations or every single business would be doing this. What's the catch? What's the catch? I don't necessarily know what the catch is. Um, but we got caught by it and we're in it. So um, I will do some research to understand more about who this might apply to and if I can start spreading the word to the world about it. But I, I did say to my representative, like, why this seems too good to be true. And he said that with COVID, people aren't grabbing onto this incentive. So they decided to make it 100%. Uh -huh. I don't know how that can be cost effective to them, but I guess that's not necessarily something I need to worry about. Um, so well it's the kind of thing you know any of us who know small business owners should say check it out yeah and i you know i we should do some research to understand who it, who is it applicable to um but yes once that information is clear certainly we should we should be promoting it um we have a lot going on in the parks um and so most of my, a lot of my time in the last couple of weeks has been towards managing a reopening plan of Kingston Point Beach, um, which has had some ups and downs, but it's open um, and with restrictions, but um, hundreds of people are certainly using it. Um, but we were able to get funding uh, passed through the REC Trust Fund, which comes from developers uh, to do a number of different projects in the parks. So over the course of the year, I'm gonna be working on many different Infrastructure projects, including uh, pavilion replacements, playground replacements, um, installation of Wi-Fi in many of our parks, uh, constructing a skate park, um, building a spray park. Uh, so there's lots going on in the parks. And so that's a lot of capital projects that I've been working on. Um, the open space plan recently made it through the seeker process. So uh, we, the council, has to formally adopt it on uh, July 7th, but it passed through the Laws and Rules Committee with a negative uh, declaration for significance. And so uh, that basically means that the open space plan can now make way towards final adoption. And I proposed that at the next um, council meeting. So that's hopeful and I'm happy that it went very smoothly through the secret review. Um, and uh, Kingston Point, we have a lot going on. I, I did mention that with the beach, but we also um, are, are working through permitting for the 
we're pre-permitting at least for the climate adaptive design project. So we had our meet, a pre-permitting meeting with the DEC to go over the some preliminary designs for what the terraced beach would look like. So that's been very, very exciting. Um, and we anticipate, so all of the demolition is done for the improvements project at Kingston Point. Uh, and we anticipate construction to be happening there later this summer um, after we go through and finalize the permitting process with um, Army Corps of Engineers and DEC. Uh, and I do want to formally announce because uh, the last time Julie? Um, just one question. Uh, which uh, design got picked? I think I missed that out of the three designs for uh, the sea level rise at the beach. Uh, the middle one, number two. So oh, alternative two. Okay, number two. With elements yep. from okay. with elements from yep. number one. So uh, all of the results and an analysis of the results and this information is going to be posted on the climate adaptive design web page of the city's website. I'm um, just anticipating getting that presentation from the consultant. So that should be at any time. Um, and as That's I was just great. saying, I wanted to just formally make the announcement because we speculated the last time and it did come out into the public right after, but we are awarded a Silver Climate Smart uh, Community Certification. So congratulations, everybody. <laughs> um, we are proud of this. Are we the only one in the state? My understanding is we're the only city. Yeah, and, okay. Um, there are other communities, but not that are a city. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, that, that I, for one, am very proud of. Um, um, and now I have five years to figure out how to not have to submit it again for silver and go, don't go for gold or something else. But we are gonna get a new plaque that says silver because our current one says bronze on it. So uh, we'll have that for when we do our tabling. And uh, it's also worth saying that there's a slew of new climate smart communities that reached bronze. Right. Yes, there's, there are. Do you know what that number was? It was quite, it was 15, 20. It was quite a large number. I don't know the number. I'm, I'm thrilled that so many communities are doing it. Um, it's not just about us being number one. It's, it's about so many communities doing it. And um, it's very exciting to know that this sort of gamification process is really working. Um, and I think it's, it's a lot of work, but it, it, there's, there's visible success. And so I'm, I, think it's a, I think it's a good thing. Um, that's the major projects that I'm working on. Oh, organics, we're still uh, analyzing some of the data that isn't completed yet. Um, but it hopefully will be. We, we anticipate having uh, our final meetings with folks uh, in July and then making presentations of the final report and things probably in August. Um, any other questions about any of the projects, the sustainability projects of the city? Maya? I'm just curious about the um, wetland delineation and the parking lot at Kingston Point. Do you know, is, is there any decision on that yet? What happens with the parking lot that's underwater? Yep, so uh, the Kingston Point Park Improvements Project was divided into two phases. Phase one is north of, of Delaware, which is what you see what happening. Phase two is south of Delaware. And so it's already been delineated. Um, and that happened about a year ago. So they delineated the whole wetland south of, of Delaware and then also the portion north of Delaware when you're on the access road to the left-hand side. So that has all been officially delineated and designated as a wetland. Um, that being said, the portion that's south of Delaware um, is the part that we're going to be facilitating to be an actual wetland. The, um, the way that that presents itself um, is going to be determined on se several different things. One of which is how much the phase one costs so how much money we have left for phase two, which would be you know, dictating the scope of that project, but also based on um, permitting and regulations and recommendations from DEC. Mm -hmm. So whether or not we need to remove the blacktop underneath or leave it is gonna be up to them and is going to change the price of the project. And whether mm -hmm. or not we you know, let it continue to grow or we, I don't wanna say containerize, but like, 
hold it in one place will change, you know, different things. So um, we have to understand, we will know when we go out to bid for phase one, how much the construction of the soccer field in the parking lot north of Delaware Avenue will cost, which will then know how much money we have available for the, the phase two, but it already has been delineated. Is, um, I'm curious if anyone knows whether parking lot mm -hmm. asphalt is considered toxic. Well, the oils in themselves right. can leak out, but that parking lot has been there for so long. And by now there's nothing left in that parking lot that hasn't already leached out. I mean, it's underwater all the time. That's, that's kind of with this drought, I think it's, well, even prior to last night's rain, it, there was still water there. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the question though, with, with removing the asphalt, I don't think, and I mean, I, I can't say this with certainty, but I don't think at this point, it's a concern about the, 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 um, the integrity of the, of the plants and the water based on the, the asphalt, but more that when, if we were to remove it, the hydrology would change. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I don't know, because the water table's so high, I don't know how much it would change, but I just have to assume that just the physical act of doing it and like, all of this wetland has established itself with the existing conditions. So we're totally going to just go with whatever DEC says, like if these existing conditions are now conducive to a wetland, which they seem to be, the, mm -hmm. less, the, the lesser impact could be leave as it's. Right. Uh, if, if removing it has either just a short-term negative impact, but long-term it's much better, or as a whole, it's all better, we'll do whatever needs to be done. Um, yeah. But I'm a little bit skeptical of like going in there with big heavy machinery and digging it all up and hoping that things come back, like get back mm -hmm. to the way it is. But um, just I don't know. We'll see. A whole bunch of holes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Anything else on sustainability projects? Oh, well, as always, Julie, that's a ton. That's a ton of great stuff. Keeps me coming to work every day and it's very exciting. So you haven't been bored during the during the pandemic. You haven't I haven't been, been bored. bored. Not so much boredom. I really wouldn't have used that word whatsoever. I'm not sure I've ever used that word boredom. Um, okay, so <laughs> um, any updates with Repair Cafe? Um, we're kind of at a standstill right now. Um, sure. I, I attempted to have a virtual clinic. Um, also, I thought last meeting was canceled. I don't know why I got a notification it was, so I didn't show up, sorry. Um, but I think even before last meeting, I reached out, I made a, a survey for people, for the coaches to fill out. Um, I only received like three responses. And then um, one coach reached out to me through email and said, you know, he wasn't interested in a virtual cafe. Um, he didn't, he, he, he said that like coaches thrive off of like face-to-face -face interaction with community members and kind of the back and forth tabling of an item, walking it through with them. And so they just didn't feel like they wanted to. And those are our volunteers and the, that's the knowledge. So without them, I can't really do a virtual event. Um, a lot of communities have been. I did attend a um, Fix It Clinic online event where they had people from all different countries and coaches from all different countries. Um, they had someone from India who was trying to get like a fly slaughter repaired. Um, they had all, all sorts of stuff that was cool, but it was a little hard virtually. Um, I think there's some cons to it. Um, there was kind of all of the coaches in one room and uh, they're all were giving their input to this one person who doesn't really have a lot of experience with fixing things. Um, you know, people might not have all of the tools needed that the coaches have. So, you know, there's a lot of planning that has to go into it. And I just don't think we're going to do it. Um, we, we've talked around the idea of a do-it-yourself um, virtual clinic, where we just have like three topics. Like we have the, the phone woman, Karen, um, talk about how to diagnose and fix your iPhone. Um, maybe like a simple diagnosis of an item. But yeah, it's so hard to just have that broad spectrum of you know bring whatever item and then talk about it online so yeah. it's not about it still but I can, um, I can add a little bit of context 
you know, because repair cafes and fix-it clinics are, are truly global, when the pandemic came down, there was a tremendous interest in holding these virtual repair events. And um, quite a few were organized in different parts of the world, just as Melissa's saying. And um, however, the steam, I observed that the steam really ran out of them pretty quickly because they're just not very effective. Mm. You know, they're interesting to a point, but you can't get, you know, you can't really get much repair. So that, that has, um, that effort has sort of died a natural death. Uh, Melissa said that there are the DIY workshops, which are not, you know, purporting to repair your stuff. They are just, you know, giving you good information, um, you know, instructional essentially. And Hastings on Hudson did a series of those, which I think went quite well. All right, so that basically closes the chapter on how, you know, how or how would you be able to repair during the pandemic. Uh, regionally, our next step is going to be open air repair cafes. So think of the way that open air dining is being conducted these days. And that's uh, basically the model for a open air repair cafe. So we expect to be able to do some of those starting in August. And, um, you know, of course, you know, it's up to every community to decide whether they want to organize it and how comfortable they are with it. And it's up to every every volunteer to decide whether they want to come out for that. Um, but it would be the next step. It'll be the bridge towards, uh, you know, in-person repair as we have known it and loved it. Great. Okay. Anything else on Repair Cafe? Uh, Anything with outreach and education? Um, no, kind of also at a standstill. Um, I was on my to-do list to reach out to Betta about the pamphlet and um, the design of the pamphlet. She had that design contact. Um, and she's been very busy, so I haven't even bothered her about it um, since last meeting. Uh, but Maya did reach out to me if you want to give an update. Yeah. Yeah, Cal and I um, and Melissa have a meeting in the works for next week, so we'll get back to you. But we, we've got, yeah, we'll we'll get together next week and then let you know. Okay, awesome. Uh, does anyone have any update on a green business challenge? Beth is not here. Okay, that's tabled. Uh, any updates from zoning, Kevin? Uh, just the um, agriculture initiative, uh, which uh, there's a group that meets on Thursdays at 3 p.m., which I've been attending um, on, um, periodically, not every Thursday, but most Thursdays. And uh, yeah, I forwarded that group uh, the draft of the um, a template, draft template on zoning for urban agriculture, and we'll see where what the group is uh, going to do. They've been meeting with Emily Flynn. And I think one of their questions is if they want to wrap themselves into LiveWell or they want to partner with LiveWell as an independent uh, group. So I'll keep you informed as to where we're at with the zoning on that and um, if and when they're going to present something to the Common Council. Great. Thank you. Cal, is that you that dropped off and came back in? Yes, it's me. Sorry about that. My phone dropped the call and I couldn't reconnect. It's all right. You know you're calling number three now. Oh, number three. Dang it. Who took my spot? <laughs> Who took my spot? <laughs> it's not a problem. Who's calling number one now? There's, you can't Is no one calling number one now? You can't replace caller number one, Cal. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I'll just sit here in third place and think about what I've done, I guess. Yeah. Carry on. A third base is a really, really important position. <laughs> We are not having this conversation. Uh, okay, so keep smart, John. Okay, and Serena, you're on, right? She's on. Yeah. I think she's having issues with her tech, with her sound. I'm on. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can hear you. Oh, oh. wow. Let me get away from screaming three-year-olds. Two seconds. <laughs> okay. I can understand. So, was this about heat? 
Yeah, the heat, uh, this is about the the Heat Smart program, which has been uh, substantially enhanced with other group purchase opportunities. Do you want me to bring up this this slide? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I mean that, uh, okay. We have a flyer, an informational flyer about this program to share with all of you. This comes from Sustainable Hudson Valley. And let me ask, are you all familiar with Sustainable Hudson Valley? Do you know what this regional 501c3 organization is about? Mm -hmm. uh, it has existed for more than 10 years, uh, and it is involved in many things, uh, including the Solarize program, which ran for three years, a, a current program for EV charging. One aspect of that is working with EV uh, auto dealerships so that their staffs are trained and able to, you know, effectively represent the cars that they're selling. But here we have a, a, a green group purchase program, which is which builds on the current NYSERDA program, which is Heat Smart. And Heat Smart is basically a solarized model, so it is public education and group purchase discounts. Now, what Sustainable Hudson Valley, uh, well, Sustainable Hudson Valley was selected by NYSERDA to run the Heat Smart program for certainly Ulster County, uh, I think, well, Sullivan County, yes, and then it's even been extended to Dutchess County. But Sustainable Hudson Valley felt that there should be more to it than simply Heat Smart. So Heat Smart, this is important to say, focuses on air source heat pumps. Uh, commonly, you you would see them as splitters. They're the units that sit up near the ceiling. They're a rectangular piece of equipment that sits up near the ceiling and and both heats and cools. So it's important to know that air source heat pumps. Yes, they heat in the wintertime, but they also cool and de dehumidify in the summertime. So they are year-round benefit, and they are awesome. All right, so in addition to the air source heat pumps, this green group purchase program adds to it rooftop solar, battery storage, EV charging outlets, community solar, and last but not least, home energy efficiency improvement. <clears throat> so Sustainable Hudson Valley put out basically an RFP uh, to everybody who's working in these, uh, you know, in this space. And a number of companies came back and made proposals. There was a small group of people who were the, who, who vetted those proposals and both Beta and I were a part of that group. And so out of it comes what the information you see on this flyer. And Serena and I uh, attended a virtual briefing uh, uh, last week. There were actually two sessions. I, would, I was there at the first one, and she was at the second one. So Serena, having said what I've said, is there anything that, that I've missed? The three-year-old's got her. Any questions? Any questions? I don't think I you missed anything, John. No. Okay. Well, so here's one other thing that it's important for everyone to know is that those two briefing calls were specifically for climate smart commissions, climate smart communities. So either commissions or task forces. And on those calls, we had representatives from climate smart communities of Kingston, New Pulse, Rhinebeck, Red Hook, Gardner, and Woodstock. So these are all climate smart communities that are, are going to put out the word as best they can uh, about the benefits of this program. And the way I always like to put it is, you know, for a climate smart commission like ours, this is a gift that we can give to our citizens. It is great. So it goes through September 8th. Mm -hmm. And so people should check out the website for information. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you know, we as a commission don't have very much ability to put the word out, you know, except, you know, interpersonally, those of, you know, those of us who are on the commission, uh, you can put it out through your personal networks. Uh, you know, on Maya, for example, I don't know whether this, something like this is appropriate to put out through Clearwater or not, but, um, uh, you know, this is, you know, this is the classic thing. Long. This is a real saving, mm -hmm. a real opportunity. How do you get the word out? Ah, one more important thing to hit you up on is the NYSERDA aspect of this, which is, again, the heat smart or the air source heat pump aspect of this. Um, they have also, NYSERDA has developed and is making available to everyone participating in Climate Smart, which is statewide, you know, Heat Smart rather. Heat White is another statewide program. It is a, uh, hold on, let me pull it up here. It's a platform that allows companies to effectively target likely consumers or likely clients. So it's been described to me as, as a quite a powerful tool because it, it sorts or identifies uh, neighborhoods and in individual homeowners that are you know, uniquely qualified or very qualified for these, for these um, uh, systems. And uh, one of the companies that is very involved in this is RICOR. They're an HVAC company, very active in our county. And RICOR used, has used this tool, it's known as Faraday, uh, with really remarkable results. Plus, NYSERDA is throwing in a whole bunch of money for uh, uh, promotion. Uh, it's an 80-20 split, which is higher than they've ever gone. Uh, they will pay 80% of the cost for such things as direct mailings, and other forms of publicity and advertising. Kind of what I take away from this is similar to what, Julie, you were saying with the LED, is that these programs, the state has such, uh, you know, aggressive goals for greenhouse gases. And, and the only way we're gonna reach it is to really push these programs out. And so NYSERDA is doing things, you know, taking it to a whole nother level they are offering incentives at a higher level than we've ever seen. Yeah, great. So um, we can post this on Facebook and share it with our networks. I think, so John, you circulated this to the whole commission and people can share this. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else anyone wants to say or speak about any of this? Thank you for sharing all that information, John and Serena. Um, uh, I this idea. Hi, sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, no, sorry. You go first and I'll come after. I just can't see because I'm on the phone. Go ahead. Um, I, I was thinking, um, so Karen is in the real estate market. What if like Climate Smart puts on with her like a new home buyer's like event with, with information like this? That's a great idea. Uh, just can I interject? I'm sorry. I was uh, just needed a second to get off mute. Um, one of the ideas I had when I participated in this um, call was to, I think, to tie it into the greenhouse gas emission inf in information um, to the inventory. Sorry. And then the other idea I had was for the Kingston City Land Bank, because I think we have some opportunities where we could implement this. And since I'm also on the board for that, I, I thought that that would be a good way to do some crossover. That's right. Yeah, oh. Serena, you had mentioned that's an excellent idea. And I'm sorry that Karen's not here because I was totally trying to tap into her as our real estate, um, green friendly real estate face of Kingston to kind of act as a liaison for that. And we will be putting on things like home, first time home buyer workshops as part of what the mission of the land bank is. And so I'd hope to kind of coordinate that. I'm not sure how soon we could get it all off the ground, but I did put an email out to Melissa and the new person that is working with her. And she did say that she would get back to me, but she couldn't do it until next week. So I'll report to the board 
um, what I hear back from her in terms of coordinating some effort uh, to get this really to hit the ground running with this and get people signed up before September. Hi, this is Cal. Um, so fortunately, I've already done the work of setting up um, a workshop for new home buyers about energy efficiency and solar and all of that with the Ulster County Board of Realtors. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think it's still happening, but I did all the notes for it before um, I was uh, I left my position with Sun Commons. So I kind of have three quarters of a proposal about that put together and would be happy to repurpose that. I don't think anyone is going to use that after all. So um, if it would be helpful. So I, I, I sat down and talked with Karen about this actually, and she and I sort of put together like, what are the questions people usually want answered? Um, it was more about solar than the other things, but I think bundling it all together is a really good idea and I'm happy to help with that. Um, the other thing is we have two RICOR heat pumps in our house, one in the basement that's cut off from the uh, air for the rest of the house and uh, one in the main living space. And keeping those set on dehumidify in the summer is pretty much all we need most of the time. Um, it makes it really comfortable. You don't even need to turn on the cooling. So they are great. Heat pumps are great. <laughs> Can I just jump in? Because Melissa was asking for people to do testimonials for her uh, mm -hmm. on this call. And that yeah. might be appropriate for you since you're totally uh, articulate about this and knowledgeable already. And then Wait. the other idea I had, Cal, is we're looking for people to participate in a, a design review board that we're starting for the land bank. And they're trying to get some diversity voices on that. and. That also is where they're trying to hear about green proposals to the properties that the land bank is acquiring. So okay. it just occurred to me that um, you, you know you should try to uh, see if we can we can set up a time to talk about getting you to talk to the Kingston City Land Bank Board and and seeing about what possibilities there are there since you've done this work and that's something that we could potentially tap into um, since like you said you've already put it all together. Wonderful. Yeah, I see that you sent me an email. I can um, maybe we can keep it in that thread. I'd be happy to to talk about this more. Uh, Great. Yeah. Thank you. This is no wonderful. Problem. Thank you, guys. And um, actually, I just had a quick question. Um, I don't know much about this world of things, but um, is there any type of like equity lens um, or? you know, putting resources hmm. towards working with underserved communities with this type of stuff through Sustainable Hudson or otherwise? Well, that's the land bank. I can't comment 100% on whatever. Generally speaking, that should be the um, focus and often isn't. So, uh, I'm certainly motivated to to direct those resources deliberately. Um, and the Kingston Land Bank would also be one way of directing those resources really deliberately. Yes. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, it's well, probably the Kingston that's Land that's Trust that's as well. We have people working on that as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, anything else on this item? All right, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Thank you for uh, for sharing all that information, everyone. Yeah. Um, okay, solar, community solar, any other updates, Cal? Or anyone? I don't, hi, it's, so uh, Cal again. I don't have any updates at this moment. I'm still trying to figure out like what channels I need to be paying attention to to get that information uh, organically, I guess you could say. So I don't have any updates for us at this meeting, but I am working on, having a better like scope on what is happening in the area for solar. Okay. Any other updates from anyone else on that? Um, anything with the bike pad master plan, Maya? Have you heard anything? No? Okay. Tabled uh, youth engagement? Anything with youth engagement? I think we can bundle it with education. I think that if we're uh... If we're working on um, education, we'll be, we'll be yeah, focusing okay. on teaching and also engaging. Okay. And to all those parents out there, happy last day of homeschool. Oh, hooray! <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to be done with it. <laughs>
<laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Maya. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything with New York Energy Stretch Code? Um, kind of. I was gonna talk with Steve Knox, but he um, he's really busy with the reopening of you know phase whatever so he has a lot of they're ramping up with building permits and everything so i told him i'd leave him alone for a little while um but he's still you know interested in having the conversation um i also attended a webinar that you sent me julie um about the new york energy stretch code through the new york green building conference and um, learned that um, Beacon adopted the New York stretch code um, in April. Um, Hastings on Hudson had a public hearing about it last Tuesday. And then there are quite a few other communities um, in the Hudson that are, ex or along the Hudson Valley that are expressing interest, um, including New Paltz and Marble Town and Ulster County. And they have um, kind of like some New York stretch code circuit riders that are available to come and give presentations. Um, I know for Beacon, um, they came and presented to the mayor, the common council, and the building, uh, the code enforcement officer there. Um, so that's that's an option available um, if we want to pursue that and get that on the agenda at some point, if there's interest. Yeah. But it, it seemed like they they validated that it's like important to get the code enforcement officer to get their buy-in. So I feel pretty good about continuing on that path mm -hmm. but um yeah that's that's the only update i have well it's very good that other towns have been moving on it mm -hmm. Julie's picture just for Kevin. Okay, Kevin's back. Kevin, what's next on the agenda? Yeah, I'm here. Hmm. Well, some of us are still moving. Some of us. I'm still here. I'm still here. Hmm. Kevin, do you have the agenda? Can you tell us what's next? Uh, yeah, let me pull it up. Uh, whoop, whoop, there's the flyer, uh, the agenda. Okay, green fleet and anti idling policy, followed by nothing under new business and then announcements, communications, events, and updates. Oh, we're, we're down to it. Yep. Any guesses as to where Julie, where Julie is? No. Maybe her internet went out. Yeah. Could. While Sorry. Julie's off the call, I just had some, this is Serena. I just wanted to bring something up um, that I had emailed Julie about that I think we should recognize um, Casey's contributions to the board somehow make some kind of a commemoration or, or honorary acknowledgement of yeah. some type. Yeah. That's a very good idea. 
and yeah, she thought that was appropriate. And then I had kind of asked permission to bring it up. I'm not sure where it needs to go from there if we need to make some kind of a motion. You, you've um, had experience with this, I bet. How, mm -hmm. how does a uh, commission like ours Uh, let me turn this to CNC. How have other commissions done this? Hey, all, I'm sorry. I had an emergency I had to just take care of. Um, okay. Thanks for moving on with the agenda. We, uh, we, Serena, do you want to repeat? or? Well, I just jumped in because we didn't really have anyone to address the next agenda item, which was... Um, anti-idling policy yeah, I, I, don't have, I don't have any action on that right now and okay. i just brought up i brought up the idea i had to honor casey schwartz and his time on the board some kind of uh, commemorative acknowledgement of some sort so how is that done by other commissions there must be many examples of so he also sat on the um, Conservation Advisory Council, and uh, one of the other Conservation Advisory Council members um, is putting together a formal letter, I think. Um, she, I gave her information about like how long he served and how many meetings he's gone to and that sort of thing. Um, so she's doing that on behalf of the Conservation Advisory Council. Um, and so, you know, I don't know if he has if he serves on any other or has served on any other boards. Would it be appropriate to have one letter that's on behalf of the Conservation Advisory Board and the Climate Smart Commission? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Well, I mean, it's up to everyone here. I mean, I, I think it's a, it's appropriate, yeah. Yeah. It'd be very nice. Okay, so I can ask, uh, I can talk to Emily about the letter. Great. Okay, um, I'm sorry, what else? Did you guys go over public safety? No. Okay. Any update from uh, Serena? You weren't able to make it, right? To public safety. Is Serena still here? Uh. Yes, I'm here. Uh, any update from public safety? I actually had sent you a chat message about that. Um, I have not been able to audio access the meeting, so I've been sitting in on the last two meetings, and I thought that I was. I thought I had the issue, so then I thought, well, I'll just check in at the next meeting and apologize. And then at that meeting, I also wasn't able to do the audio and, and realize that I think I need some kind of access code. Or I, I don't know, I, I'm not sure if it was a problem on my end or on their end, honestly. Okay. Um, so I either need to pass the torch to someone who has better technological capabilities than I do or um, make contact. I thought I sent, I feel like I sent an email and just never got a response because it was, um, Andrea Shout is the the commissioner for that board, right? She's the, the uh, alderman at large. She's the president of the council. Okay, but so it, she runs the meeting. I should I should be just more succinct about that. So she, she tends to chair the meeting. Yeah. And um, she, she should send you the direct link to get into it. Yeah, I think by the time I realized that it was an issue again, I didn't hear back from her because she was in the meeting and she wasn't like checking her email. Uh huh. Okay, well, if you want to reach out to her for the next one and you can CC me if you'd like, or if you have a trouble getting in, I can help to try to step in. Okay, wouldn't that, I, I believe it's tonight after this meeting, right? Oh, yeah, you're so. right. So that's the problem is by the time I realize it's the next meeting and, and we're already on top of it, I, I thought I was going to be able to get my computer fixed, but it's a problem with the, the wireless signal, not the computer. So my, my laptop is not 5G capable and I have a 5G wireless network. So I have to somehow address that. Okay. All right, well, um, I think that for tonight's meeting, it won't be uh, possible, but we can try to figure it out for next meeting, next month. 
I mean, yeah, and so I'm attending the meetings because I'm calling in still, but I just haven't been able to give them a report. Okay. And honestly, nobody said anything. So I don't know if it's like they forgot I existed because I wasn't sitting at the table or or what the deal is there. All they right, weren't yeah. like, oh, and where's a person from, you know, where's our report from so and so and such and such. Right. All right. I mean, I don't think it would hurt to shoot a note to, to Andrea just to mm -hmm. tell her, you know, this is the case and, um, you know, for the future, if she could send you the, the uh, login information. I will follow up on that with her. Great. Thank you. Uh, anything from Ulster County Climate Smart Committee, Cal? Um, let's see. The countywide um, composting, municipal composting, is getting pushed back a couple months um, oh. because of uh, people having to scramble and reallocate resources for COVID stuff. Um, I believe it got pushed back. Through, you know what? I don't want to say. I don't remember. Um, so that is the um, most pertinent piece of information that I have from uh, Monday's meeting. Um, there weren't a lot of orgs doing their check-ins um, at this particular go-round. Um, manager also mentioned to me that um, they might be looking for someone to take sort of uh, to sort of captain the regional renewable energy implementation um, planning and whatnot. Um, so that is sort of an unofficial uh, piece of information. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure uh, any other announcements, communications, events, or updates? Kelly, you had the note about the Extin Extinction Rebellion film? Yes, yeah. Um, I was going to suggest that if uh, folks are available, it looks like a very good film and it's pertinent to sort of climate justice stuff. Um, I got the invitation from XR and just thought I would forward it along. Great, thank you. We got that. Um, John, or, or, or I guess John, or whoever else is managing the Facebook, would you be able to post that and also your uh, HeatSmart flyer or your collaboration yes. flyer? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I would be happy to do that. Okay, is there, are there any other announcements, events, or updates, or communications? Uh, okay, so um, do we have, is everyone going to be around for the next meeting enough that I'll have that we'll have a quorum? Uh, the date is going to be July 22nd. I need at least six people. Bars and all. It should be. Probably. Yep. yep. Okay. I see. No, yes. Yes. I should be there. Okay. Great. Um, is there any other business? If not, mm -hmm. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. John, oh, can I have a second? Uh, I can't. I'll second I'll that second. motion, Therena. <laughs> okay, I saw Melissa's hand first. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right, nice. all in favor? Aye. Okay, six and eight, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, and, everybody. thanks for the updates, everybody. All right, yeah. I hope you all have a good night. I'm